Confront JS. Yeah, feeling good? Great. So I'm Van and I'm working at Wix. Um, and I want you to look at those symbols on the screen uh, representing JavaScript testing frameworks and test runners. And I want you to raise your hand if you've ever used one of them. Yeah. OK, many hands. That's good. Sorry? Now, I want you to raise your hand if you went through the source code and you know how they work under the hood. OK, less hands. Um, so I was exactly in your place before I've decided to do a deep dive into the code bases, and I'm here to talk about it. Um, Richard Feynman said that what I cannot create, I do not understand. And I think that understanding how our code uh, infrastructure works can lead to writing better code help with solving problems, and sometimes even don't get them in the first place. So what we're going to do today, um, Tejas, my friend, talked about how important testing is to your application. And I'm not here to tell you how important it is to write tests, though I really believe it. Um, I'm going to show you how to write a simplified version of a test runner, hopefully show you that it's not uh, that complex as you would think it is. So that's going to be a high-level overview of our test runner that we're going to build. So there's a runner on the top, and it's going to get a um, JavaScript test file. And then there are going to be two assertions or two test cases in this uh, test file. And our test runner needs to determine whether our test passed or not uh, by a certain logic. So let's code. OK, is this big enough? Cool. So this is our test runner, um, sorry, our example. And you can see the utils model. And in the utils model, there is one function called say hello function. And it accepts arguments and returns hello joined by a space with those arguments. And this is the uh, test file for it. So it requires the say hello method from the utils model. And there are two test cases. The first one says, it should concat hello with the supplied argument, which is the title of the test, followed by a callback, which has the logic inside of it. So it expects say hello with an argument of world to be hello world. And this is pretty regular stuff if you're used to writing tests. The second one is it should concat hello with more than one argument. So it's a different edge case that gets confront.js in 2018. So hello confront.js 2018. And I'll go to the terminal. And I'll use Mocha um, to run my example. And I just want to say that I've chose Mocha because it's relatively simple, although there are many test runners available. And it looks something like this. It should concat hello with the supplied argument. Um, yeah, it works. Two passing tests. I can go back to the utils model and break my implementation, something like wello. And now if I'll run it again, you will see this um, two failing tests with red, uh, zero passing. And uh, I've got a diff here. It expected hello world, but actually got well a world. Uh, so to, we know how to fix it. Um, and we can go back to our code and fix it. But I'm not here to talk about the tests themselves. I want to show you how to build a test runner. So I'm going back to our uh, VS code. And I'll create an index.js file, which is going to be our uh, kind of API to the runner. So this is an imaginary API uh, of a runner, which we don't yet have. So I'm getting runner.js. That's probably not needed. And then I'll create an instance of this runner because it's class. I'll use runner.add file and runner.run. And let's just grab our testing file here and put it here. Cool. So we have a runner, which is a class. So we create an instance of it, and then adding one file and run it. But we don't have the runner yet, so it's not going to work. I'll create runner.js now. And I'll export the model, which we know it's a class, a runner class, that has two methods, one uh, add file, and the other one is run. So the add file method get a file path. 
And let's say that we have files array here. So we can just push every time we call the add file method, we can push another file path. And yeah. And just to see that we've got it right, let's console log our files array. So we should uh, now see the files array and the console. So I'm calling a node index.js. And as you see, we've got an array with one file. Um, and now we just need to somehow evaluate this file and grab the, those eats and register them to the test runner. So I'll use a require for this, and I'll iterate over each, each file. And for each file, I'm going to call the require method. And another way to do that is like this, which is the equivalent of getting each file and then calling require on this file. So this time, if I'm going to run node on the API that we've just written, we see a reference error. It says it is not defined. And we know this error because we get it every time we try to reference a variable that does not exist on the scope. We can solve it. We can go um, to the util spec JS file here and just say that there's a function called eat that does nothing. And this time, if I'm going to run it again, it's all going to be all right, right? But actually, those eats are provided by the test runner. And we are the test runner. So let's think about how we can do that. Um, so we need to call it from a different file. And JavaScript has this concept of the global object. That every property you'll assign to it will be available everywhere. So we can say that global. By the way, it's the same as window in uh, every browser environment. Equal a function. And this function, just as a reminder, gets a title and a callback function. And instead of doing something with it right now, I'm just going to save it like we've saved the files in a test array. So this just tests, push, title, and callback. And to see if we got it right, we can just console log these tests right now. So I'll call node index.js again. And yes, we've got an array with two objects. Each object consists of title and a callback. And now we just need to run over those files and call each callback and kind of run each test. But before I can do that, I want to create another type here. So I'll call it test type. And before implementing anything, let's going to see how it's going to look like. So if those tests, uh, I can iterate over them. And for each test, I can call test.run, which is a method that I haven't created yet. For that, I will need to bring a class called test that I don't have yet and create an instance of this test here. So now let's go to the test file and create those cl this class. So in the constructor, it's get an object that has title and a callback. And it has only one method, which is the run method, which for now, we're just going to console the title. So instead of seeing those two uh, objects in array, we're going to see two titles, hopefully. So I'm calling node on the index.js. As, as we see, we have two titles. And now we need to get to the logic of what it means to run a test. So I'll go back to the util spec.js file. And I'm going to comment these expectations here, which I know I haven't explained what it is. Uh, this is an assertion library that is, I've taken it from Jest. It's just a assertion library, originally written by uh, Michael Jackson. Um, and it's not a part of my test runner. I, um, I only use it, and you can use it too. It's available on NPM. So I just comment it out, and I use Mocha again to run the example. And what do you think is going to be the result? My two tests are passing. And they pass, although I didn't do anything inside of them. So the only way to break a test is to throw an error, like this. So you see, the first test just uh, didn't pass. So we kind of understand the logic. Um, we just need to throw or not throw an error inside of this callback. Um, and it maybe tells us something about what this expect thing does. It says, for example, if I'm calling say hello with the word world, um, 
and it doesn't equal hello world, can you please draw an error for me? And this is quite of the same, but the uh, expect library has much better output. It's not going to draw us something like this. It's going to say this is supposed to be this, and uh, we'll have a diff. And also, there is a really nice syntax. It expects to be much easier to read than this one. So I'll just remove this, and I'll take this back. And we have one thing in JavaScript that could help here. If we call this callback here, we can wrap it up and try catch. And we know that what's going to be inside to try here will mean that our test passed. So I can do like this, v, and then call the title. And from here, yeah, I know, that's a mistake. I can call the title with an x. So this time, let's run our tests again. And yeah, I don't see the error. We should probably log it. So yeah, a really big object error with a stack trace and everything. And this is supplied by the test runner, it's, uh, sorry, by the assertion library, expect. And you can see the whole stack trace and the matcher result that's usually used by the test runner to give you better result in the end. And of course, the lovely diff here, which I think we just want it. So I create, I'll just run two string. And this time it's going to be nicer. So two x's, we've got the expected receive thing. And yeah, it's quite nice. And I know what I need to fix. I'll go back to the utils model and change it back to hello. And this time, my two tests are passing. Yeah. <laughs> so let's just do a quick recap of what we've done. Um, we created an API to the runner like this. That we uh, call the runner, create a class, add file, and then run. And from the runner point of view, we've just uh, iterated over the files that we've added here in the API. Not before we needed to patch the global object to do something like this. Every time you call it, we need to actually push another test to our model of tests. And then we've iterated over the tests and called the run function. The run function ran the callback inside the try catch block and just logged to the console. So this is it. But you probably say, come on, run, this is, this is not enough. I mean, it should look a bit better, right? And I don't know if my whole suite passed. I just know that every one individual test passed. And you're right. So we're going to build it. Uh, we're going to build this kind of thing called reporter. And this reporter is a concept that every test runner, almost every test runner implements. And I'm going to refer to Mocha here. You can probably see this. So first, they have the spec reporter, which I can connect to my runner and go to produce this output. And I can also use the dot matrix to see something like this. And of course, don't forget the neon reporter uh, that you all love. Yeah, exactly what you might expect. So they just add here reporter, neon, and it somehow works. And this is really nice because everyone can write their own reporter um, without interfering with, interfering with the logic of the test runner itself, which is a very powerful concept. And, um, also, in the CI system, we will probably want a different logging strategy, and a reporter will make us do it. So how shall we do it in Node? And I'm introducing you something most of you probably familiar, familiar with. It's called events. And there's the events uh, core model that you can call in Node. And most uh, class are rely on this one, extends it. And it's working like this. I can just call events class. And then I extend my original class, which is now in a meter. So it has two important methods on it. The first one would be the on, and the second one would be the emit. So every time I'm listening on event and then calling the emit, then this callback here is called. And it's very, it, it looks really simple, but it's a very powerful concept. Because now I can say that my runner is an emitter. I can listen from a completely different place from the reporter and just emit events for testing failing, testing passing, my test is finished, and just log accordingly. So that's exactly what we're going to do. I'll go back to the runner, and I'll just bring this class over here, and I'll extend the runner. 
with the event emitter class. Now I'll have to call super, which is the constructor of the event emitter. And now I can say this to emit and emit the end event. And the emit uh, method is, exists because I just extended event emitter. So the next thing that we want to do is to create the emitter. So, sorry, create the reporter. So I create a new file. I'll call it reporter.js, which is going to be a function that accepts the runner because it needs to listen to events on the runner. And then just I'm going to log the runner itself. Yeah. And let's say that every time I'm calling runner on end, which is the event that we've just created, let's console log something like finish testing. Yeah. So I'm just logging the runner, and then on the event of an end, I'm just logging something else. Um, so now we need to connect those two because we have a function that accepts a runner and the runner is already an emitter. And a good place to do that would be the index.js right here. So um, I'm just going to bring, grab the repo that we just created. And yeah, I'm going to say that the repo is a function that accepts an instance of the runner. I'm going back to my terminal, and I'll just call node index.js. And if you're right, we're going to see uh, the object of the runner. Yes. So you must be familiar with the file in the test array, but these things, like max listener and event count, are actually coming from the event emitter, from inheriting it. Uh, the finish testing here, it's our end event. And those two are coming from before. We've written them inside of the runner logic. So what we do now is to external this logic into the repo. So I'll go back to the test. And here, instead of logging, I need to do a meet of an event, right? But I don't have an instance. Uh, I don't have a, have a reference to the runner here. So back in the runner, I can just edit. And the runner is this, so just this. And now I can accept a runner and just put it on the class. So instead of doing this, I can say emit something like test pass. And I can also supply an object which will have a title. Cool. Here I would like to do the same with test fail. And I'll add the error. So we had two events, test pass and test fail. It's all connected. Now we just need to go to the reporter and listen to those events and log accordingly. So I'm adding two more events, the test pass, yeah, and the test fail. They're both getting the title, but this one also get the error. Okay, so we're gonna need some colors, right? For that, I'm going to use Chuck, which is a terminal a styling library. Yeah, something like this. Um, and I can use something like the red and the green color to color my terminal. Um, let's grab that required call here. And I can destructure the red and the green color. So every time a test pass, I can console log um, in green, something like a V, and then I can log the title. I don't need this. And instead of a V, I can probably use this. Would be nicer, right? Every time a test fail, I'm going to log in red. So I'm going to log an X, followed by, again, this, the title. And I'm going to log the error. Yes, two strings. So you probably remember how Mocha preserves the number of the failing test. 
If you have two or three, it will show one, two, three, right? And we can just do it like, like this. We can preserve um, a failed state counter starting from zero. And every time a failing test occur, we can just increment like this. So instead of showing an irregular X, we can show the number of the failing test followed by a closing bracket. Um, and now we're just left with showing in the end if our suite is passed or not. So here, um, we can use like this condition that say that if we have more than zero failing tests, then we can log that the tests are failed. Uh, and otherwise, we can say test pass. So this thing would be in <coughs> green and going to be test passed. And 2018, we can probably use an emoji for that. Yeah, this one. And for the test fail, we can use in red, test failed. And stat emoji would be so cool. And another thing that we would like to show is the amount of testing and passing tests. So for showing the passing test, we can use the same counter strategy for passing tests and just increment here. So I can do like in green, passing followed by the amount, yeah, the amount of passing test, which will also work here. I'm just doing this for spacings. Um, and we can do the same for failing test. Of course, this would be nice in red. So what do you say? It's going to work? Yes. Thank you, Tejas. <laughs> um, the only one who believes in me. <laughs> so I'm going back here, and I'll change it to Willow again, so we can see the breaking thing. And I'll run node index.js. Yes. So we got the cry, the modging here, failing, passing. We can, of course, preserve the time and do many things in this reporter, which is nice. And let's just finish with the green tests. So I'm changing it back to hello, calling again, and yes. So how much time do I have? Nine. Two minutes, great. So I'm not going to do a recap, sorry for that. And I'm just going to back to my presentation. I want to finish with that. So please look at the screen. All of those are JavaScript tooling that you use every day. Um, and they have one or two things in common. They are all open source, and they are all written in JavaScript, which means you can just look at their source code and be part of it. Um, I personally started to contribute to Jest, and it's really amazing experience. I encourage you to do the same. Thank you very much. <laughs>